really appreciate being here. It's very exciting to see all the faces that I've met at different seminars and the interest in uh, healthier patients. The primary thing that I want everybody to think of is the energy, the energy effect of the whole system. And this is Dr. Vole's comment. He said, if you know one thing, know the tooth energy chart and its interrelationship of teeth to organ and tissue systems. And it can be the organ causing the teeth to be a problem or the teeth to cause the organ to be a problem. And with that concept, it'll make it much easier for you to see what's happening to your patients. Dr. Bull also said that 80 to 90% of systemic problems are caused or influenced by the oral cavity. So the dentist is in a, in a very, very important spot to help many people that are totally overlooked as far as the oral cavity is concerned. Just going to uh, go through these. Overlooking the oral cavity, like I just said, is a primary thing. So what I've done, I have a number of full mouth x-rays that I would like to point out different things that you can see. So what I, what I recommend is each one of you have your patients bring a full mouth x-ray. Most of them can get them. And with that, I'm going to demonstrate and show you what you should see or what you will see in these x-rays that can help your patients. And then we'll go into uh, cavitations and using EDS, electrodermal screening. And the primary thing with the electro electrodermal screening is to locate these problems that can be an issue for the entire system. Uh, we also use electrodermal screening. When a filling is removed, we check the tooth to see that the tooth is in as good a condition as we can tell. So um, then we're going to look at bimetal currents and the electrical effect. And this is something where you can get an instrument that is not expensive, but it will tell you a lot about what's happening in the oral cavity. And then the last phase, uh, you'll find a toothbrush on your table. And I'd like to just go through that to show you how you can help yourself. OK, I'm going to go here. I If we look at this, this is one of the full mouth x-rays that's so important for you to uh, evaluate. If you look, there's just a, a lot of metal all the way across here. So these teeth related to organ and tissue systems can be one of the major factors in upsetting that system. If you look up here, here's a root canal. Pretty easy to see. So in these metals can be a nickel beryllium, a nickel gallium. They can also be dental gold, which everybody seems to think is quite good. Uh, I've gone through that with a number of patients, gotten their gold out, and their general health improved dramatically. We all think gold is really good. The other items that we'll see Here's another case is uh, the aluminum oxide, which is not considered a metal, but it really has a metal effect. Uh, iron oxide, fluoride, barium. In this case here is a number of root canals. All right, let's look at this one right here. Large intestine and lung. This is where your tooth energy chart comes in and helps you find problems. This is an eye tooth here, and uh, that's related to the uh, liver and the gallbladder. This is a, a, a false tooth right here, or a little bridge. 
You can see the fillings in between the teeth here. As one lady asked me uh, during our break, you know, what about her fillings? Had the dentist take an x-ray of the fillings, like a, a bite wing x-ray, which is the, the crowns of the teeth, very simple, very inexpensive. If you can see the fillings on the x-ray, you know there's something in those fillings that could be a, a burden to your health. Even though they say, well, it's a composite, yes, but what does it contain? Barium is one of the major factors that upset a lot of people. Like I just said, the aluminum oxide, the iron oxide, and then dentists have requested that the manufacturer put in fluoride to stop decay. It really doesn't. So here's a case where a 63-year-old female jaw pain and tired all the time. We suggested what to do. She didn't want to do it. She just wanted the decay cleaned up and no symptoms were changed for her health. And you can plainly see why. Here's stomach, spleen, and pancreas. Again, large intestine and lung some more root canal work, and of course, a lot of metal. But health means different things to different people. Now this doesn't look like very much, but it's very devastating. If you see this little white line, that's a bonding material. It's put out by Kerr, and uh, it contains barium. So this small amount there's no such thing as a small amount. It's like just being a little bit pregnant. You know, it, it doesn't work that way. You know, so this, those things have to be addressed. The bonding material that we found the best is Holestor, H-O-L-I-S-T-O-R-E. It's made by Denmat. It does not contain aluminum oxide, iron oxide, or fluoride, or barium. This is a, a lady that came in and she was quite huge, uh, probably 200 pounds over her normal weight. And we uh, went in and cleaned up the mouth and got an upper denture in because the upper teeth were that bad. And she uh, came home one day and she said to her husband, you know, I'm so disappointed Nobody at work noticed I lost 25 pounds. Well, she'd have to lose 100, you know, to make sense. But her energy increased, and I think that's one of the reasons for the weight loss. She could get around better. Here's a, uh, a farmer that's been coming to me for a long time, and I've tried to get him to get his bad teeth out. Well, finally he did, and... Uh, through the process, his energy level went up, slept better, mental clarity sharper. So this is what we're seeing all the time in our patients, these improvements. Now I can't understand why this lady would have a lot of headaches, but maybe you can figure it out. These, these are implants here, and implants come in many different uh, materials. This is the blade implant. That's one, some of the first uh, implants that were used. However, very few of them stayed in place. Here's uh, infection all around this tooth. And of course, as you can see, every meridian in the whole mouth and tooth relationship was being affected. So she finally got all of the teeth out and upper and lower denture and made a nice improvement. Again, this is looking at an x-ray that you would say looks pretty innocuous, you know, no problem to the patient. But again, here's your barium showing up. These are composite fillings. These are what you will see if you get your own x-ray taken. And the dentist has said, well, I'm putting in, you know, a good composite material. I'm a biological dentist. You know, and everything I do is compatible. 
Well, the x-ray tells something different. This is a lady uh, is coming in from Russia. She'll be in in March. She has uh, 15 root canals. That's the way they do things. If you look here, this is a solid casting, which is put right over the teeth and bonded in. So you'd either have to cut each individual tooth to separate to get it out, but my my approach on this one is to cut the tooth off right at the bottom of the of the crowns and pick the whole thing out. Then take each to, each tooth out and then check each individual root for any pathology using electrodermal screening. And I know that it's, you know, most of you don't have the electrodermal screening equipment, but you can get the x-rays and you can help these patients by looking at that. This is the EDS that we use. It's uh, EDS 2000. I can give you the uh, the address and the phone number of Jim Jones. I, I, I like this one the best because it seems to have the lightest touch. You don't cause a lot of pressure points by trying to push the probe through the finger like Dr. Vole did. He had no mercy. We saw him do a, a check on a man with diabetes and the man just straightened out in the chair. The pain was so bad from checking him with his electrodermal equipment, but he got the answers. What's the C? Please? What's the C? What's the name of this one? EDS 2000. What's the C? The C. What does the C stand for? Computerized. Yeah. I didn't know that. This is uh, what we use to locate our cavitations. Uh, this is a a retractor. This is the where we cut a block out of the bone and then we recheck the area with the electrodermal screening and if it isn't as clean as going to show up on the uh, electrodermal equipment then we go back in with a number eight round burr and clean the area then recheck it to be sure we got as clean an area as we can tell. This is a case here where this is the upper jaw and we use the electrodermal screening equipment to stimulate and then we check lymph two, which is on the thumb and that gives you the drainage of the upper and lower jaw. Now again, I know that a lot of you don't have the equipment, but this is what you would expect from somebody who has the equipment. This is where we open the jaw bone and then here's where we were able to take out a portion of the bone. Many times the bone is so soft you can use an instrument like we're using here and you can get the bone to relieve from the whole jaw and come out and send it in for pathology. This is another cavitation area where we expose the jaw and got it cleaned up in here. This is the number eight round burr, as you can see here, that we use to clean gently. Then recheck the area with electrodermal screening. This is an area on number 30. Number 30 is your lower first molar related to the large intestine and the lung then you can cross check the organ system with the jaw point that you cleaned up. And if you get a good reading, you can feel pretty confident you've got the area clean. I like to get the patient back in about eight to 10 weeks and recheck the area because what you see is not always what you get. So it's good every time they come in, I recheck the areas. And then if I don't, if I don't know what I'm doing, I send him to Dr. Yu and he shakes his finger at him. He says, you have a dental issue. <laughs> okay. 
This is uh, the way we start that out, by opening the tissue. Then we take a small, straight burr and we'll pierce through the cortical plate and you actually get the drill will drop into an empty space. And then we use the, uh, the little drill to make a little window here and that's gonna be our biopsy. As you can see here, this is a upper jaw. This is in your uh, stomach, spleen, and pancreas. Digestive problems are certainly affected when it affects that area. We do the same thing with a drill and cleaning it out. That's a cleaned out area. And then this is your biopsy. It's the um, same thing here. We open up the area. This is uh, back of the last molar. And what we found, if you do surgery, the dentist does the surgery, and they have not put in compatible fillings, the area does not heal. So I know I'm a good example. I had one area, number 32, that's the wisdom tooth area on the lower. Uh, done nine times until I finally figured out what was happening. This is all in the process of learning. So I'm passing this on to the dentists in the group and then of course to the patients that may have cavitational surgery done at some time or another. But if the fillings aren't proper and uh, compatible, you're just gonna be repeating it. This is the cavitation that was cleaned up on the bone biopsy here. Then we send it into the oral pathologist. We use a